What happens to a nation whose current generation is unfit to fight a war? And yet that nation is in the midst of a war whose outcome will determine whether civilization lives or dies. We are facing two potential directions for the future of mankind. Choices which largely lie on the population's ability to choose to fight rather than roll over and hope their death doesn't hurt too much. Humanity now could either become elevated to an entirely new level or plummet into the deepest dark ages mankind has seen thus far. We now, together, are in a terrible situation where governments of the world no longer represent the cause of civilization. Since the November 2010 election, the U.S. population has found itself sulking in a corner, licking its wounds, faced with the ugly reality of their decision to vote out of hatred for Congress rather than build up a Congress who would represent them. This pessimism, if permitted to continue, will reap what it sows. Austerity budget cuts, bailouts, and long wars. We at LaRouche Pack propose a much more American alternative. What we must now do is dig within our cultural heritage to find the tradition, the precedent for action, in which we as a nation can find the moral fitness to survive. In the midst of the Great Depression, a generation came to adulthood too young tired, tired by a life characterized by a day-to-day -day scramble for survival. This was a time when in some regions of the United States, 90% of school children were malnourished. One million family farms were lost in a four-year period, and unemployment reached 80% in cities like Toledo, Ohio. So many schools had reduced hours or shut down completely, that three million children simply left school, 200,000 of which took to riding the rails. But with the election of Franklin Roosevelt and his economic team, committed to the true culture of the United States, came projects such as the Civilian Conservation Corps, which brought the forgotten man out of their dying communities and into an environment where hard work was plentiful. Skills, trades, and discipline were taught and learned. The physical economy of the U.S. was radically altered, and from this training came a generation of men who, when the nation called, were able to make the moral commitment to the past, present, and future, to fight World War II and defeat Hitler, the product of the brutish empire that stands in our way still today. Seventy-five years later, in the midst of an economic collapse far worse in scope and implications than the Great Depression, and Roosevelt's economic recovery is only a pale shadow in the collective memory of the United States population. Nearly destroyed under Trumanism, further attacked through the cultural warfare that was the Vietnam War generation, the knowledge and experience of a productive economy is soon to be extinguished in the United States. The generation now entering adulthood is so far removed from this experience that we are on the cusp of what the Egyptians warned the Greeks as their civilization was about to die out. There are no old men among you. Fortunately for us today, this is not yet quite true. Through the Nawapa organizing that has occurred over the past four months, with the unprecedented, excited, optimistic response from the industrial skilled workforce and engineering layers in the United States, we have amassed not only a, the core of a true builders committee with the know-how and expertise to begin construction and make the scientific developments required to fully implement NAWAPA, we also have the potential and desire to enter into a multi-generational partnership with today's current No Future Generation. The current youth generation is suffering from an environmental disease. It is the disease of a generation raised in the 9-11 Bush-Cheney era, a generation entering adulthood during the presidency of a psychopathic, narcissist Obama. The disease manifests itself as a generation with little commitment to life beyond their own existence, and increasingly little commitment to even their own lives, as seen by the cultural phenomenon of extreme violent acts of murder-suicide, and now expanding into the realm of terrorism. 
The reality of this situation requires us to look deeply within our own commitment to the future. Lyndon LaRouche has called many times for the development of a modern civilian conservation corps. With the initiation of NAWAPA on the horizon, now is the time again to revive this concept. With a modern CCC, skillless, wayward young men and women would have the opportunity granted to their great-grandfather's generation. They would be taken out of their drug-infested neighborhoods and sick social environments, brought into a core of young people led by experts in construction, engineering, and the physical sciences. The youth would be taught the discipline and skills to be the workforce that assists in the initiation of NAWAPA. They will be the generation to continue its construction, as the NAWAPA generation, now being born, will become the first generation in over 50 years to grow up in a productive society. Instead of a four to five generation dark age, we have the alternative ready. We must now actively pursue the cooperation between our society's old men and the current young adult generation as a means of staving off the impending dark age. You now must join with LaRouche Pack to fight for the measures to remove the obstacles that stand in our way of succeeding in developing a new platform for mankind. This means removing Obama, the British narcissist. This means invoking a global glass steagle to shut down the bankrupt international financial system, clearing the air for a Hamiltonian credit system necessary for NAWAPA. So join with us today. After inspecting Skyland, the commander-in-chief takes a seat at the head of the table to eat with the boys. And he enjoys every bite of the plain, wholesome food furnished at the camp. It's very good to be here at these Virginia CCC camps. I wish I could see them all over the country. And I hope that all over the country they're in as fine condition as the camps that I've seen today. I wish that I could take a couple of months off from the White House and come down here and live with them because I know I'd get full of health the way they have. The only difference is that they've put on an average of about 12 pounds apiece since they got here, and I'm trying to take off 12 pounds. <laughs>